All right, so in this video here, we're going to look at the uh, Blue C7622 automatic charging sensing relay. So this closes when it sees a uh, charging voltage on a terminal. They have a few different models of this, 24 volt, and some are manual only. Some of them have a plunger on them like this one, so you can close it by hand if you have a need to do that. And you can also lock it out. So I've got two of them here. So we'll take a look at them, how they work with the switch connected to them, as well as uh, with the switch disconnected. You can use it both ways. So I've got uh, the manual here and a little diagram of how I'm going to use it in my camper. So uh, when you buy these, they come just in a plastic uh, package. If you buy them in the bulk pack, they don't come with the uh, switch with them. So basically, it does a few different things. It's the same manual for uh, all the models. You can see the different voltages and times that it needs to make switching happen. So what I'm going to be using in my camper is I'm going to have two 1000 amp buses in it. One with coach batteries and then another one with the uh, DC loads and then the, uh, so the engine, the alternator up front. So I'm going to have two of the 7622s with the uh, loads in the middle and uh, the, uh, a charger here. So when I'm plugged in, it'll charge this battery and that battery. If I'm running my engine and I'm like boondocking or something like that, I'm not plugged in, this will not close automatically because it requires uh, voltage on this bus and it's going to be dead. So you have to bump this into uh, to close it and then uh, set it to just leave it basically on on at that point. If you had uh, solar on here, this would probably keep it the voltage up high enough that it would uh, work automatically, but I don't you have solar in my camper. So what I've got set up here is, uh, pardon me, a, uh, an adjustable power supply on the left and a motorcycle battery on the right because you need, uh, like I said, two voltage sources to make this work properly. When you buy these, like I said, you get uh, a switch. You can buy another switch that has like a blank on it that you can slide back and forth to prevent people from pressing the buttons. So when you push this in, like it's a sustained switch, it doesn't, it's not like it bumps back automatically on its own, like a starter switch would be on a car. These uh, three pins here are basically what do all the work on this. So I've used the multimeter and figured out what the pins do. So the red wire is your remote wire on the uh, right here. So when you have that red wire floating, the uh, switch is in automatic mode. When you hook the red wire to positive, it locks it on. And when you uh, put it to ground, it locks it off. So they say you can use a momentary switch instead of the uh, sustained switch. So basically with the momentary switch, you would be bumping the red wire to plus or minus, and then uh, you'd be going back to automatic after that. So I don't know if it, it might check every 10 minutes as to what the state of things are. So I would prefer for me to just use the sustained switch so that it's not keeping on resetting. Because if I'm boondocking, I won't have any uh, voltage on this bus perhaps. Actually, that's not quite right. We'll, I'll show you this uh, a bit later on. But anyway, I think that just using the switch that it comes with is preferred. I don't know if we can get the, the light to work here or not. The other side has uh, information on it. So you get Carling Technologies. So I'll probably have a little switch panel I can put together in the camper. So on here, I've got my uh, negatives joined on the back of this power supply for my battery. And I've got the battery 12 to one side and then the power supply to the other side, which will be disconnecting and reconnecting. And I've wired the switch according to the instructions. So basically you just have a jumper there. And then the black, you'll need to 
run it to ground so you put two uh, wires under that terminal. It's pretty easy to use. And then you can use these uh, wires here to make the uh, relay open. So you could have it to a, a cranking signal so when you have the key cranking it'll open the uh, relay or you could have it on an engine running relay if you have multiple engines running they want you to keep your charger separate so you can use it for that but I don't need to to worry about that perhaps unless I was running my generator and my engine at the same time because the generator has a, uh, a little charging system in it as well so I think that's all we need to look at right now other than we'll take a look at the manual operation so right now when it's turned this way you can see that it's on remote it takes a bit of force to turn this so you don't need to worry about it moving on its own you can't push it in when it's on uh, lock off and then you can actually put like a zip tie through this hole when it's either up or down and uh, I don't know if they made that intentional. There seems like there's a reason, but it's not really mentioned in the document as to why it's like that. So you can force that in, and you can run the zip tie through. Again, if for some reason you're desperate, you might be able to do that. Then to unlock it, you pop it back there, and you're good to go. So put the camera on the stand, and we'll start looking at the the functionality of all this. I'll just take uh, some of the spare parts away. So right now we have uh, one battery connected onto here and uh, turn on power supply. Actually, I'm just going to turn off the camera and start it up again just so I have a transition point. Alright, so we're back. So basically what's happening right now is uh, there's no lights blinking on the uh, display, which means it's counting down, and after 30 seconds it's going to close the relay. So just wait for that to happen, then we'll start uh, playing around with it. Alright, so that's closed now. So you can see a little bit of current going out of my power supply, just charging the battery. That's uh, all that's really taking place there. So at this point, you can actually disconnect your load on this side because it's reading the voltage on the two terminals here and they're linked together so it doesn't know that one of them is disconnected or not. So if you had uh, knife switches or isolation switches, obviously this would be like much bigger wire and a full installation. You might want to open this switch first so you don't end up closing in by accident on a load. So now if I were to turn this voltage down, it's going to go down a bit. It may go down enough that this opens in about 30 seconds. We'll give it the opportunity to do that because it's supposed to open at like 12.75. So because my battery isn't fully charged, it uh, was able to trip out. So if you had this on two batteries that were didn't have any charging taking place, eventually uh, they would separate, which is the intent of the system. I found with my previous camper, it would take up to 12 hours if you had fully charged batteries by the time they got down to uh, about 12.75 volts. So now we'll bring, and this is blinking, this is the fast blink. It's kind of hard to tell which blink is which, but the fast blink is uh, telling you that it tripped out on low voltage. So I'll bring this up. Now it's counting to 30 seconds again. If I bring this back down, that should be the uh, slow blink, which is indicating that it's not high enough voltage for it to close. So it blinks on low voltage, either fast or slow, to tell you if it uh, tripped or if it's waiting for voltage increase.
just going to let this close in here and we'll take a look at the uh, isolation wires. Alright, so that's closed in. And throughout this whole time, this has been in automatic. We'll take a look at the manual modes after the fact. So these three wires here are all the same. So if we touch any of them to a positive terminal, it'll open this here. So I think uh, by doing that, it takes two minutes before it recloses again. Or if you hold it sustained, then it just wouldn't close again. So we'll just force it like this, or you can open it. It's a fairly simple device as far as all that goes. Now I did notice that with this, you can disconnect all the power supplies, and it doesn't know what to do. So. Let's wait for it to close and we'll simulate that because it gets the power for the solenoid from the terminals. So if you were to quickly pull off both of the uh, sources, it has no power to open or close. So now it's like trapped in this state because it's a stable relay. It's got no signal. It doesn't get the uh, signal from this the power coming from the power supply into the switch comes from your battery typically but it's not telling this to do anything it's really just giving you uh, power for the LEDs in here and then giving you the uh, positive signal for the uh, red wire to tell that it's an automatic so again keep that in mind if you're depending on what you do it might uh, you might end up closing a, an isolation switch under load, which you wouldn't want to do. Another thing to keep in mind is like if you had like a pair of golf cart batteries and a thousand or a three thousand amp inverter all wired together, it's going to drag your voltage down below twelve point seven five volts. So if you're trying to make coffee or something and you had your inverter on, you would have to uh, put this in on. Otherwise, it's going to drop out pretty quick, maybe after just 10 seconds when you turn on the inverter and it starts to, to boil water or if you're doing some other heavy load. So you want to leave that on, but then you got to be careful with that. You wouldn't want to leave your start battery on because that would kill both batteries. So you would want to leave your start battery on automatic and then your uh, coach batteries in manual, if you're using a big load like an inverter, otherwise, like I said, you'd have some problems with that. So I'm not sure if there's anything else we need to look at in this part. So I think what we'll do is we'll move on to uh, having it with the uh, without the switch connected. All right, so we got the other relay hooked up right now without the switch. So one thing you do need to do is ground the uh, black wire so that this can operate. It needs to have a, a signal. So you have your 12 volts on one of the terminals and then uh, the ground on the black wire. And then we're going to, when you leave it like this, it's just in automatic mode. So we'll turn this on. And then you can take the, the red wire and if you put positive to the red wire, it's going to close. And if you put the red wire to negative, it's going to open. So we'll give it 30 seconds here for it to do its thing. Then we will uh, make it open and then make it close. It's hard to know what it's doing right now because there's no LED hooked up to it to tell us what it's thinking about.
Feels like it's been longer than 30 seconds. Okay, so as you can see, it's automatic. It's uh, voltage dependent, obviously. I didn't have it quite turned up high enough, but we did prove that it works, so that's good. So now we've got it closed, and uh, if you just wanted to use uh, a, a momentary switch, you could do that. So you take your red, touch it to black, and it opens. And then if you wanted to close it, you do that. So right now it's closed. It's in automatic because there's nothing touching the uh, red wire. I just want to stress that again. And one thing I didn't really mention was that uh, when you have your battery connected, like say if you had a, you need to kill both of your batteries in order for this thing to isolate. So if you were to disconnect this battery here, because these terminals are touching, it's still reading 14.4 volts. So it's not going to close or to open on its own. So keep that in mind. So like when I'm using it with my camper, to be able to uh, flip it to uh, on to close it and flip it back to automatic. And then as my uh, coach batteries deplete, it will isolate it automatically. So I uh, just need to bump it basically with the switch to close it and then it'll go back into automatic. So I think we've covered everything we need to look at with this product. It seems like it's well built. It would have been my preference if the uh, terminals came out of the faced out because pretty much everything else that you buy the uh, studs are going to be facing out. So you're trying to wire this. If you're going to use a copper bus bar you'll have to get like a thick square or uh, try to turn it 90 degrees to go from one plane to the next so that's not really ideal. It's too bad that they, they do that with this product but uh, otherwise it seems like it's good stuff. Blue Sea makes a good product so uh, hopefully you found this informative and thank you for watching.